happens when we take students from the science classroom and place them in the real environment that they are studying? What happens when we challenge students to ask questions, to probe deeper, to use the same tools that scientists use in the field to answer their questions? What happens when students are placed in groups and have to collaborate to come up with a solution to their problem? What happens when students' ideas about the natural world become the driving force for the work that teachers design in the science classroom? This inquiry study was designed by high school science teachers with a scientist and environmental educator for expert from the Biogeoscience Institute from the University of Calgary. The teachers wanted the students to design, test, and come to a conclusion based on a hypothesis that the students generated after spending some time becoming acclimatized and more comfortable in a mountain environment. The curricular area the teachers were mapping to dealt with concepts such as climate zones, the transfer of thermal energy by the hydrosphere and atmosphere, the hydrologic cycle and phase change, and the relationship relationship between biome, solar energy, and climate. Sue Arledge from the Biogeoscience Institute suggested that the teachers probe the students with the following question to intentionally structure their inquiry. Before heading out on their field study, students had time to sit with exemplars of the same types of investigations that they would do, be doing in the field. These exemplars are posters from real scientists that had previously completed investigations in the same mountain ecosystems that the students would be working in. From the expert exemplars, students began picking up the criteria for strong and effective design. This included testing, analysis, justification, and conclusions from evidence-based, peer-reviewed scientific work. These expert exemplars were compared by the students to a teacher-generated non-exemplar, which highlighted such things as jumping to conclusions based on little evidence, misrepresentation of data, inaccuracies, and oversimplifications. Before heading to the field, students had developed a deeper understanding of the quality of investigative work that we would be required of them when they began their own field study. The teachers wanted the students to understand from the start that ecological investigations are complex and multidimensional. By highlighting the characteristics from the exemplar and non-exemplar, students were intentionally prepared to take on a complex investigation. Students also had time to observe and ask questions from a researcher currently working in the same mountain area students would be conducting their own inquiries. While learning about how this scientist worked in the field, students gathered ideas to inform their own investigations. Scotland and I'm studying Chinooks in southern Alberta and their effects on the water balance. So in particular, I'm focusing on the effects on snow cover and how to better model the effects of Chinooks on snow cover. Student learning was intentionally scaffolded to enable them to first acclimatize to an environment they were unfamiliar with and then open their eyes to the possible areas of investigation. This is a highly interactive process where the teacher continually asks probing questions to surface so, student understanding well, and drive them deeper into going. the inquiry. Yeah, the inquiry is intentionally scaffolded to bring students along into the complex investigation. And what we find is by giving the kids different perspectives, so we had one team that was just hoofed animals, we had a team that was just small mammals, a team of predators, a team that just looked at the coniferous trees. If they just focus on one object of study as they're walking along and look at a trend, then when they get back in the big group, we do a big group brainstorm like this, suddenly the idea of what changes with slope is really concrete and then they can start to get closer to getting a question that they want to answer. If we had just said, walk down the hill and see the changes, I am almost positive we wouldn't have got this kind of um, variety. Of after the students had walked one slope and made specific observations about how the slope was impacting the flora and fauna around them, students generated a testable question based on one of the observations that they had wondered about. Students were challenged to gather evidence that might support or refute their hypothesis based on the initial observations. A list of the group's testable questions was recorded on the board, and the students received immediate feedback about what they might consider as they designed their experiment around their testable questions. The Some of the questions that came level. forward were, as elevation increases, does the aspen diameter decrease in size? Are there more animals at the bottom or the top of the slope? During this experimental phase, students began to deepen their understanding of the importance of random samples and gathering sufficient data to form conclusions. So if the first one is moss, number of moss squares, number...
Once their experimental design was complete, student groups could choose from a variety of scientific equipment that could be used to gather the data they would need at their test sites. What you're testing? Once students had gathered the tools that they needed, it was time to head out for their second slope study. Okay, and what are you thinking so far? What's your hypothesis? We haven't tested it. Well, the higher we go, it seems well, like they're getting rather smaller, but they're more dense. Okay. But there's less. There's way less of them. Yeah. The only ones you can see is like along the line. And we don't see lots of ass. Can you describe what piece of equipment you're using right now? Uh, it's to check the humidity. And what are you noticing about humidity? It's dropped so far. Humidity is dropped. Just write S1. Oh, Why don't we just okay, do the age and diameter rather than okay. height? Yeah. Okay, you guys, someone start on another one with diameter. I still have to. Okay, so basically what we've been doing is we dug out an area with really deep snow over there. And then two areas over here, we're doing three samples on each side of the road. So our other half of the group's doing it on the other side. And then what we did was we collected the samples um, by digging just a spot in the middle of our area about. And then we also measured how much grass, how much moss, and then how much other is in each area. And we took pictures so that when we look back, we can see what the other actually was. For example, if we after the first round of testing and data was gathered, the class was brought together again to bring forward their initial results and preliminary findings to the whole group. Again, feedback was given to each group as they brought their data forward, and Sue skillfully gathered their findings in a first attempt to model what might be happening in the environment on the slope based on their data. Sue demonstrates how she honors the students' ideas and findings by inquiring into their thinking herself, wondering and questioning out loud, which also de demonstrates to the students the same type of questioning and inquiring that the students should be doing during their study. She also monopolizes on moments to teach into spaces that can further the whole class's understanding of the scientific principles and concepts at play. At pH of six. Okay, so we did notice that it was getting a little bit more acidic. Uh-huh. And... We're thinking that we're going to go into it and see if the bear, if it's because of the berry plants that it was more acidic. Oh, okay. So you want to see at another site if you find those. Um, one of the things that we notice in this kind of group outdoor teaching, especially, is that giving um, feedback to any student ideas right away it helps the entire group um, kind of form their own ideas and get feedback at the same time. But it also lets people take chances and make predictions that they may be wrong at their thinking, right, in the end if we test things. But it just lets them take the chances that you need in science to, to get to outside the box and maybe find some weird relationships. We're, when I, After gathering feedback on their initial findings, students were challenged to refine their thinking and head to a third slope to see if their initial findings could be supported at the final site. During these investigations, the teachers closely monitored what the students were saying and thinking so that they could continue to challenge and push their thinking deeper. By collaborating together, the teachers were able to discuss and brainstorm how to best tackle the gaps in the student understanding and look for ways to overcome student challenges in the process. So, in terms of what they might look at later on, is no slope because it's so. Well, they missed aspect all together yesterday. Yeah. Once students were back in the classroom, they were charged with looking at other research that had been done in their topic area and comparing their data to other bodies of research. They formed conclusions and identified further areas of study and prepared presentations for the field station to be submitted as further bodies of research from the site. Before final submissions, students received more feedback on their work as it reached completion. I'm looking at the rubric to, to give back some feedback to the other group. So there was some peer evaluation going on, is the words I'm trying to say. So peer evaluation went on. Uh, now they have a rubric that I will use eventually, but now they have a place of, okay, I've met this qualification or, or uh, this standard, this standard, this standard. Now I know where to go to improve, what else I need to add. Um, they seem quite focused after that feedback loop with their peer so this is our graph for all the diameter of the trees at the different elevations uh, these were just the averages of each site uh, and each site is marked and we noticed that um, in the middle it was always the highest and that at the at site at, at the last site it was actually taller than the first site this is all the just all, all our data and we I understand that ecological field studies requires a lot of work 
and getting accurate results doesn't happen overnight. It takes a lot of effort and patience to work with nature. Ecologists make sure they have accurate results by taking time to analyze it very carefully. They don't absolutely more engaged. They're they're asking deeper questions, more thoughtful questions, um, taking more risks uh, in asking their questions. Some of them who normally don't pipe up in class absolutely are asking question after question.